Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another one of my screencasts where I'll be using R and RStudio to analyze data I've never seen before. As usual, the data comes from the Tidy Tuesday project, an amazing project run by the R for Data Science online learning community. And this week, we're going to be analyzing caribou locations. I will first say I don't I know very little about caribou. Are caribou similar to, mo to moose? Are they? Maybe. So it looks like ah, it looks like they're mostly in Canada. I think there is, this is a, so. This is a caribou, and we're going to be finding out where caribous are are uh, located. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, individuals and locations. All right, I'm going to read it in. Let's see. Library uh, tidy tidy verse and theme set theme light steps I like to start with and bring in the tidy Tuesday data. Looks like we have two sets of data we're looking at today. I forgot to mention that uh, as usual, this is live. So if you're watching it live, I really encourage you to join the live chat, bring in some, uh, bring in some comments, and uh, definitely ask questions as you go. I won't be able to answer all the questions, but I try to answer questions as I go live. If you have ideas for analyses, ideas for visualizations, please bring those in. It's part of the fun of doing a live screencast. So uh, let's see the two data sets that we have. One is of individuals. Uh, looks like one for each animal. Okay, we have death, uh, cause of death. Do we have um, when they were fitted with a location tracking tag? Oh, that's really interesting. We're going to have actual like combinations of longitude and latitude where they were released, comments for when they were deployed, and then uh, off. Oh, this is really cool. So this is going to be like an animal tracking data set where we see um, uh, like a, a, a caribou starts here, where uh, how it keeps moving, how it moves moves over time. Uh, that's really interesting. I might do something like an animation about it. Uh, oh, just seeing there's like types of deploy off. Could be tag remain. The animal was captured or confined. Ended with death. Tag stopped working. Fell off. All right. Um, anything other personally removed, etc. Okay. Um, we then we have the data set of individuals and locations. Okay, so let's take a quick look at, at and locations is going to be like, uh, so we have a timestamp, a longitude, a latitude, um, and uh, yeah, and the individual identifier that links back to that first individual, as well as it looks like location. It's odd that to me that the study site is in the locations rather than in the individual, but uh, we'll take a quick look at that. But the, the main really exciting thing here we have is timestamp, longitude, latitude. I don't think we've had a data set quite like this one in Tidy Tuesday, so I'm definitely excited. Uh, I think the closest we have is volcano eruptions. We have time of a, of a volcano erupting, uh, and uh, there I definitely did some animation. But uh, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by exploring the individuals. It's really good to learn what we're working with here. 286 caribou. One thing I've seen right away is we have some missing data. In fact, all right, the vast majority are missing, I think the vast majority are missing sex, uh, life stage. Okay, we're, let's actually check how much missing data we have in these columns. It'll help get a sense of what we know about them. Uh, so what we'll say is, um, there's actually a great function for this. Summarize uh, at. Or is it a cross? Oh, right, it's a cross. Oh, yep, so in the new version of, um, let's, rem let's remind ourselves, how does a cross work? Because uh, I actually don't know that I've used it yet. It's a cross. So let's see an example. Summarize across this and then a list. Okay, Let oh, sum all right, let's try this. Summarize across. Uh, and then, what is the mean of this? Okay, uh, somewhere as across sex to study site. Let's ask a, a question. Let's ask mean not is in a dot. How many are not missing? 
uh, that didn't work, that didn't come even a little bit close to working. If I'd said uh, summarize list mean, uh, it's like a cross didn't. Uh huh, hold on. Cross. Oh, oops. Cross. This is the first argument. Aha. Mean matters. Here we go. Can't completely compute. Uh, we say is it cross this? Oh, there it is. Okay. What I needed to say is like uh, not. Uh, yeah. So I had to get like not missing. And then name is. Let me try. Actually, I got like one right now. We can actually say it looks like we can customize the name. So we say dot names is. I just want it to be the column. Hmm, odd to me that it's one, two, three. I actually don't quite know why why that's the case. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the story is there. It's across these. I want to apply this function. Oh, that's pretty. Uh, that more or less works. So it looks like here we can actually show is that uh, very little of the data I have pregnant, and I wonder actually count pregnant. It's like three falses, 16 true, and a lot missing. I don't know whether to assume that the missing is true. I feel like we, we, we kind of like, not much I want to do there. It looks like, um, and all of these, life stage, mostly missing. Okay, so it's like, we really only have about a quarter of the data for these. With cath, we only have a quarter of the, uh, the, the data for these. And then death cause, all right, so maybe, oh, death. Well, death cause it makes sense it's missing because we don't know the reasons that uh, that it, it uh, stopped. I can actually get back to my um, get back to my twos data and look at our our uh, documentation. This is really handy. The um, the type Tuesday package uh, deploy off type. Okay, so I want to see what is the reason these individuals. Oh, it looks like mostly unknown. Some were removed. 60 died. I'm curious of the ones who died, do we have the, the death cause? If I say deploy off type equals dead, do I have the death type? Death cause. Often, not always. Okay, that's still pretty good. A lot of time it's unknown, suspected predator, etc. A couple are, ooh, one killed by a grizzly bear. Okay. Um, I see. So, and of the reasons that, that they generally were removed, it was like, they were unknown and other, not very helpful, and about a third removed, about some, a little less than a third uh, would, because uh, they died. Okay, that's some, some information we have uh, about individuals. We can see there's enough missing individuals. I'm not, I'm not going to make any graphs. I'm not going to make graphs, except that I am going to ask about the individuals. I want to ask study site. I want to start looking at the location data. And um, here we go. So, here we go. Yeah, so it's generally like here we go, Quintet, Graham. I'm curious for here, did they have, do they have multiple deploy on longitude, deploy on latitude? Do they have multiple for each study site? And the answer is um, largely yes, it looks like, but close to each other. So I can actually uh, I can actually plot this and say uh, let's plot deploy on do, 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 longitude is the x and deploy on latitude is the y size is n geom point. I'm not actually map, making a map yet. This is this looks like a bug. Uh, I highly doubt they went down to who knows what this is. This is Texas or I don't know, this is uh, below 30 degree, I, I don't know, I think maybe Central maybe Central America, I'm not sure. Uh, this point looks like a, like a bug, uh, but uh, the general story is by the end, if I say filter deploy on latitude greater than 40, we kind of see the shape, a uh, general sort of shape of Canada, maybe, and uh, yeah, and we're going to add um, borders to that. In a later visualization, but the oh, and the other thing that I wanted to do is say color 
is the study site. Yeah, so this is actually pretty helpful. I'm, I'm going to, I think I'm going to add, um, uh, I'm going to be at turn this into a map, is that we see, what is it, seven? One, two, three, four, yeah, seven study sites, and they're generally like co-located. So it's like these were all studied by the Kennedy site, these were all by the Quintet site. I don't know if a site is one specific location, and then the, uh, the people studying go out from there, but it uh, could be something along those lines. Okay, that's, uh, that's I think, interesting. interesting enough that let's start um, making it a map. Theme map. I do, I've done this and sometimes it bites me uh, to do theme map. I'm also going to actually quickly say scale size continuous lit guide equals false. I'm going to remove the, the legend for the size. I don't think it's adding anything. Uh, this is showing locations, but it's not, uh, it's not a map yet. So I need to add a, um, I need to add borders. And I'm going to remind myself really quickly how borders works with a region. There it is, database world, regions, Canada, I think is going to be the story. Uh, okay, so here's what here's what I'm doing. What I do is say borders, world, regions. I'm not sure if it needs to be uh, capitalized or not. Ah, that's, that's great. And ah, one thing we see is that all of these are in an incredibly small region of Canada, actually so small that Where's that other that outlier? Ah, that outlier is in the U.S. I don't like this outlier. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this outlier out. I'm really bad at geography. Okay, so one thing we learned is in, is on the scale of Canada, these are in a really small in a really small region. Actually, what region are they in? That was probably in the documentation, and I skipped it. No, this is not the documentation. Whose data has the documentation? One sec while I turn off my AC. Uh, so let's look for a moment on this. Someone suggested that it might be Alberta. I'm uh, again, I'm quite bad at, at geography. So this is just British Columbia Ministry of, of Environment and Climate Change. All right. So if we're doing a map, so this is like, like tons of caribou, and then if we're doing a map, we probably want one just on some local region. Of British Columbia, I wonder. I wonder what map data there there is. Uh, oh, is there? Yeah. All right. So yeah. Um, province. Someone suggesting province British Columbia. Is that a thing we can do? Is say border. So normally I would say world regions is Canada, uh, but if I said province. Is that, could you have states? Nope. Uh, let's actually ask to map, oh, maps package Canada. So these are things in the, um, here we go. Canada, nope, I don't care about Canada. I'm not looking for a data set of Canada cities. I'm looking for, um, I have US counties. I have a map of France. Province, province, province. There's a way to grab additional maps, but I also don't know like if it's going to be. I'm not sure how interesting it's going to be. Uh, Canada province shapefile. Yeah, maybe I could do this. So this shows how I would go about adding a shapefile. Uh, all right, I think. Let's see, I think if I bring down the whole one, someone, if someone can remind me, I've done, oh, I've done this in a Tidy Tuesday before, uh, where if I do, let me see, Geome SF, I'm gonna look up, find one where I've done, that, done it before. Ah, oh, look at me, I, I, so, oh, people that haven't seen that before in our studio, Command Shift F on a Mac, finds in all the files across this, this our studio projects, which for me is data screencasts, all the screencasts I do for Tidy Tuesday. And uh, then I can actually uh, dive into that. So if I go in here, Central Park SF, GMSF, aha, yes. So if I do CD downloads, oh, CD downloads, unzip, what was it called? Canada province. 
cool. And if I then take this line, haven't saved yet, caribou locations. Uh, then if I take this line and I say, this is gonna be useful in Amazon province shapefile. Is it SF or is it tidy SF? Or what is it? Let's find out. Does anyone know? I think it's library SF. Oh, nope, oh, uh-huh, downloads. Ugh, I baited a whole bunch of files. Make der province, move province, dot everything into province, ls province. That looks right. Aha, province shape file now. Yes, took only 47 steps for me to figure that out. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, that was that was about me, by the way, not about the creators VSF package. This is a really, really handy. Uh, this is a really handy package and a really uh, concise approach because I can now say GMSF data equals province SF. Well, I can't quite do that. I can do because the problem is that it doesn't have this, this, this. I'm going to try put that into geom point. And cross our fingers. Just how big is this province shape file anyway? How many points are in it? Did I just crash R? I might have. That's me trying to fix up. I might have crashed R, that happens. Happens to me a lot because I don't know what I'm doing. Ugh. Okay, I think it might have been because I resized it at that moment. How many objects are in here? Okay, two, with just two, Alberta and British Columbia. Huh. Two features, seven fields, and it has geometry. I wonder. I'm just trying to like add, like see what well, what is the geography for each of these. Okay, what does Geom SF take? Geom SF. I really don't know my way around uh, these in case in case it's not abundantly clear. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Geometry. I see. Okay. Yeah, so it does, um, if I want to do just British Columbia, I think I can do, I believe I can do province SF filter for um, name equals BC. And now I've got just, oh, nope, that didn't work. What was province SF? Uh, what was the name was British Columbia, not BC. Oh, I could have said prov equals BC. And now I have the one, uh, one object. Okay, I'm going to try that. I'm going to save in case this crashes. I'm going to try this again. Why is it not visualizing? <laughs> I was really excited. Oh, oh. We're starting to. I'm going to, I'm going to let it sit for a second. I was very excited about this. I think it might have like some like too many points in it. You know, that doesn't look how I want it to. Even though I put the points on, where are the points? I don't see the points. Also, it's got so much detail, which is really, oh, by the way, I forgot to put, make this just British Columbia. What a remarkable amount of detail. But I don't see my points on top of that. That's back to Canada. Hmm. Maybe I should have dropped this, and then I try this again. Wait for it, wait for it. This is too much, by the way. This is like, a, and I don't know how to subsample from within the, geo, the geometry. That part I don't, I don't quite know. Waiting for it. Yeah, I'm not getting success here. 
like I'm seeing this little point and then where's all my actual geome points? Hmm. All right, I'm gonna drop these. He said I didn't convert the individuals to an SF object. That shouldn't, uh, ah, so, so I've heard a couple, a couple suggestions. One is, are they under the province shape? I don't think so because I put the, the uh, points second, it should have been put on top by usual, GG, at least that's the way ggplot2 would usually work, is to put the, the point afterward. So I said do you convert the individuals to an, to an SF object? I don't think I have to. I should be able to, in the squirrels, I plotted both the points and the SF on the same graph, uh, on the same graph, geom SF, geom point. Uh, so I don't have, um, I don't know why this is happening. Uh, I am going to go ahead and skip that and, uh, and we'll just work from here as like, here's a, a, a longitude and latitude. In fact, I'll drop the theme map so I will say, no, I don't have theme light. I will say theme, eh, even, the, even the panel is kind of all right. Uh, so this is, this is like kind of, kind of reasonable. We were looking at, here's the, um, the, deploy, the, the deployments. All right, I'm gonna stick to this for right now. All right, uh, sorry to get, get sidetracked on the, on the mapping. All right, that was looking at individuals. Is there anything else I wanna know exploratory-wise about individuals? We found it, check deploy off type. Did we check the study? I don't see, oh, um, animal ID, hopefully not. Oh, okay, we have duplicates of some animals. Uh, and let's find out with this, individuals, filter, animal ID. Uh, all right, this could be the same animal because in all three, it's female, it goes from life stage, three to five, presumably this is years. Study site is the same. The locations are similar, and we don't have the the time, the deploy off time. See, and that's actually a bit of a frustrating thing. Is is if I'm going to, it looks like yes, it looks like recovered failed call replaced the new one. Uh, the, it definitely looks like these three are the same caribou, but that's going to be a problem when we join with the other table because I'm actually realizing. Here we go. Yeah. Is let's take a look at um, view. What is it called? Location. Locations. No, it's not location. It's individuals. Oh yeah, it's locations. This is gonna be a problem when we join this data together. I just want to point that out in advance. Is that we have animal ID and event ID, but we're gonna have duplicate animal IDs if we try joining them back. Okay, so that means that for now, I'm not actually gonna look at the individuals. I'm gonna start working with the locations. Cool. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take the locations and visualize them on, sim on almost exactly the same way. Longitude, latitude, heck, I'm even gonna do color equals, um, what was it, study site? I kinda liked how it was, reg how it was regional there and geom point. Two hundred and fifty thousand points. Oh wow. Ah, this is so cool. I did not realize that it was this densely packed. It looks like it's about every four hours. Uh, I'm not sure how long the um uh, the ranges are, but that's really cool. Uh, ooh, somebody gave me some code. One, one more. Look, well, look at this. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back into this. But somebody gave me some. This is um, uh, Weiss is Say I'm so sorry. If I'm, I'm not pronouncing your name well. Did it gave me a bit of code on? Oh, S T. Okay, I'm gonna try this once because I'm I'm interested in the um. Hmm, but but here's my question for this this commenter: Have you tried combining that with the GMSF uh, in uh, province in, in like the provinces? Because that's the step that might not work. Okay, so that's one thing to try. It's imaginary nums on Twitter is the uh, is the uh, helpful commenter. I may come back and try that, but I, I'm, I'm for now I'm gonna I'm gonna keep uh, on this path because we saw the province is, is is pretty large relative to this. Okay. So the, um, oh, thanks so much for that help, yeah. Uh, all right, so um, let's take a look at, uh, oh yeah, looking within each of these regions. 
We have like, um, we really want to know changes over time and I might want to pick one individual. So to, to do that, I'm actually going to say, take our location, I'm actually curious about something. If I group by individual and why not individual, uh, it actually we call it animal ID. And let's say I group by study site. When do they start being tracked? When do they stop being tracked? That would be min timestamp, max timestamp. And for that matter, uh, num points is n. So when do they, when, um, and I'll ungroup. Something is uh, slow in this. Slower than it should be, it's the video buffering. Let me make sure I'm on the right one moment. I am right next to my router, so I'm hoping it'll be a bit better. Is uh, Tell me if the video is doing any better. Oh, no. Hey, how's it, do how's it doing now? Can people hear me? People hear me? Uh, great, okay, looks like I'm back. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in the comments, I'm gonna add the link to the shapefile. Cool. Uh, I just added the link to the um, to the shapefile if anyone wanted to follow along with my code. Uh, okay, so uh, thanks for your patience and do tell me, yeah, tell me if, if, if I run into any other problems. Okay. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is filter for animal ID is, let's say, one sample animal ID one. This is like actually a really like easy way to say pick one single caribou at a time. Technically, if I don't want it to be weighted towards the more frequent ones, I do sample unique one. So then I, what I can do is say, okay, let's let's look at that one caribou over time. This is actually, this is, I think, a really nice... Um, Thing to do is say longitude, latitude, geom. There's actually an interesting trick. If you want to show the path that an animal takes, use geom underscore path, not geom line. Why? Because line would look would always go up and down and up and down, and that's not accurate because this person, this moose is not traveling only in one direction on the x-axis. Instead, you use geom path. Uh, to make absolutely sure of that, we can arrange by timestamp first. So um, I can actually say geom point and geom path. Oh, wow. And what's fun about that is it kind of like, oh, and I can actually say, let me see, geom point, geom path. Watch this. I'm going to actually say, so example animal. I'm going to keep the animal the same as we, as we mess with the visualization. So what I'm going to do is take a look at this path. And then I'm going to say color is the timestamp. And this will get a gradient of like from the start to the end. If th that gradient is in your cup of tea, we can try a scale color. I kind of like gradient two, low equals blue. I think maybe by default low is blue and high is red. Let's find out. Scale color gradient two. Let's make it as numeric timestamp. And let's say medium time is median of example animal timestamp. What do you ask? No, I don't like any of this anymore because what I think I have to do is, here we go. Promise as real as I want it to be visualized. No, that, that gradient is just not going to work. Skip that. Yep, totally skip that. Never mind. This is fine. Maybe we'll try something else in a bit. Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, so this is one. This is one um, uh, animal. And one thought here is like, yeah, I'm just looking around it a little bit. Like, 
that's pretty that, that's actually that's actually pretty cool where like you can see it like kind of varying uh, I wonder if I try but if I try doing actually like year of timestamp hello hi can people hear me now hello I think I'm back I think I'm back. Let's see. Hello, can anyone hear me? I'm gonna wait until someone someone tells me that they can hear me in the chat. Otherwise, I don't know if I'm if I'm actually going going through. Can anyone hear me? Hello. This is gonna look great when people watch it later. Just uh, it's gonna look phenomenal. You have not connected to chat. Oh, people can are telling me they can hear me. Oh, okay. Chat wasn't loading. All right. Fantastic. Actually, believe it or not, I don't think it's happened before that I had that big a fiasco. Thank you for everyone's patience. Those of you who stuck with through through with me. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, the plot that I was planning on making was here, where I actually showed. This is like trends over time by month is not is no good. Let me try quarter, which is kind of by season. Aha, this is pretty good. Okay, uh, I can see the chat now. Thank you so much. Sorry about that. Oh wow. Uh, all right. So the um uh again, thank you everyone for telling me that you, that you can hear me. I was kind of just worried everyone was sitting there, having lost attention. <laughs> wow. All right. So. Here's the visualization I was looking for. This is one moose over, one, pardon me, caribou over time. I can say title is one caribou over time. Yes. And then um, uh, what's, what's, exciting, what's interesting, kind of interesting about this, yeah, as we can see that like for, where's red? It's hard to see where red starts off. It's a bit where the caribou starts out here and then um, kind of goes, it ends here is kind of the story that we can see. Um, and yeah, this visualization is kind of solid, not perfect. I think, I think one of the issues, it's hard to tell the actual, uh, directionality, uh, but I think it's not gonna be any easier if I, if I, um, try making it, uh, if I don't make it a factor, uh, it's not that much easier to say like here, you get more of a sense of the directionality, but you get less of a sense, which actually I could have done without the floor date. And uh, yeah, the um, uh, this will be looking at it all over time. Okay. Uh, all right. So that's um, that's an examination. Yes, of one caribou over time. And here's what's fun: we can actually try a different caribou. We run this entire thing, and we look at oh, there's another caribou that was entirely within one year. I'm actually going to drop this. Yeah, I'm going to try with continue with the continuous one. There's some that span years. This is pretty cool how it like actually shows in two different clusters. Um, someone said, what if we try alpha instead of uh, color? One thing I think is, that's Jake. One thing I think is that if we do alpha, it's gonna, you can add both alpha and color. That's like gonna be, go from transparent to strong, and I think it's a little bit, it's kind of hard to, to really kind of see here. Uh, but that does actually give me the idea that if we make it, all, all the points uh, with alpha equals, alpha represents transparency. If we make them all transparent, that gives us a little bit better of a sense of like, uh, what has just one point and let us look through the, um, the, the various points. So I think that might be a reasonable thing to do, but I'll have to do that with path two. 
All right, so that was a little bit of an analysis. Uh, and someone just said, what if we facet wrapped by quarter? Um, we could, my fear is if we do, uh, let's say, so I would maybe facet wrap by year instead of by quarter. I think by, by quarter is gonna be a lot, uh, but I can actually say like, Oh, actually, in, in this one, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be so much. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking of a few ways we could we could try visualizing this. But what I, what I try is yes, we could do. Whenever you use um, floor date, if floor date, it's good to use as dot date around it to make it a date object. Timestamp quarter and. Actually, I don't know that floor, that as that date matters here. I don't really remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, this step worked. Uh, let's see. It does not like. What is it that doesn't it like, I wonder? What if I did try as dot date? Oh, I was right at the first I was right the first time. It doesn't like fastening by a timestamp, but it does like fastening uh, in this way. Oh that's not that's not uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, oh I like that. So thank you, thanks for that suggestion. Fasten by quarter, it might not work if there's a lot of data. But in these so far, it is kind of interesting, where it's like in each three month period, where do they spend their time? Uh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is um, this is some visualization. So here we see like I actually think this character was pretty cool, and it actually gives us I think an interesting uh, place to to look at next, which is to look at how much are they move, how much is the caribou moving? Um, total distance traveled. I'm curious. This data is that always every four hours. I really like to, to examine some caribou and start like uh, looking looking at them because I think uh, I'm curious. What is the gap? If I say arrange by timestamp, what I'd say then is uh, filter animal ID is um, actually let's I'll just use my one example animal now that I'm thinking about it, and I'll say. Gap is diff time of timestamp with lag timestamp. Here's a good trick. Unit equals hours. Count gap. Uh, all right, so it's usually, oh, I was wrong when I say it was four. Sometimes there's four. Oh, okay, this looks like four, but this looks like it was mostly around as numeric. This is one animal, um, the gaps, oh, and uh, let's make it a scale x log 10. Usually one number, but some occasionally, rarely uh, other numbers. I'm actually going to, say, going to say, I'm gonna round it and count gap. It's always gonna be an NA for the first value. Uh, filter not is NA gap, why not? It's, so it looks like, uh, for, this, for this caribou, it's usually seven hour windows. Uh, what if I tried it on all? Uh, animals. What I did is I, I throw in a group by animal ID and I neglected to ungroup after the mutate. All right, so uh, and then I did filter gap less than gap and geom call. I know I don't actually need a Count at this point. Yeah, I don't need a count. I need to be on histogram and this. Didn't really need to round it either. Okay, so the uh, bin width equals two. Okay, the story is most of our gaps are uh, we're tracking our caribou in like four to eight hours, something like that. But this gives me in general an idea. I'm gonna say locations with gaps. And what I'm gonna say is take our locations, group by animal ID, mutate, here, we have we need a gap in time and I need a distance. Um, this is one where, uh, 
technically to do distance on longitude and latitude. Uh, so I'm going to actually say last longitude equals lag longitude. Last latitude equals lag latitude. I'm going to do Euclidean distance, which is not quite real um, <laughs> because uh, because they are, but on this on these these tend to be very very close. So I think it's going to be uh, really. Uh, it's going to be pretty close. If I say longitude minus, uh, the problem is um, distance. Oh, yeah, there's a package for this. Let's see if I can remember it. Nope, not there. Not my, I lost my Chrome. Uh, I'm not going to be doing... I'm going to do distance as if they're Euclidean, and it's going to be um, it's going to be imperfect. Uh, last longitude squared plus latitude minus last latitude squared square root of that whole thing. Um, it's not really di and then speed. Uh, the speed would then be uh, the distance over the um, the gap. This is not in miles, not really in any unit. It's in, um, oh, and uh, gap as numeric, I'll say hours. Don't need a round. Actually, if I did, let me try and remember this. Tell me if there's buffering. I think there might be a little bit of buffering. What we're going to see. Um, and if I say, uh, let's see, longitude, latitude, distance, r. I remember there's a, there is a thing for this. Geosphere? Oh, yeah, that, sound, that actually does sound. That absolutely sounds right. Sphere. I remember using the fuzzy join package. And then if I say distance of a, of a point, great circle, Shortest difference between two points on an ellipsoid. Oh, but I don't need I don't need um I don't need highly accurate. I want to be as fast as possible because I'm gonna have to do it quite a bit. Ah, this is this feels pretty good. Have a scene. Okay. Can be a matrix of two columns. Ooh, okay, so we figured this out. Alright, uh sorry that uh, I got slow for a second, but um yeah, what I'm going to do actually is, I, what I was going to say is I'm going to do distances, but I'm going to do that with the dist, either dist geo or dist haversine. I'm going to try haversine, um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to try, because I, I vaguely remember that being a good way to do distance, and what I'll do is I'll say library geosphere, I'll say dist haversine, uh, and do C bind, uh, and it'll be a matrix of longitude latitude, C bind creates a mate, last longitude. I'm going to call it last lawn, last lap, just so I don't get really last lawn, last lap. And it uh, it returns it, I believe, in miles. Uh, so the, oh no, meters. Okay, that's cool. Uh, meters, so this is like meters per hour. Um, meters per hour and same unit as R. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change it to kilometers per hour. It's in Canada, so only fair we use kilometers. And put this over a, here we go, meter. I'm going to say km is this divided by 1,000. And say kph. Mm -hmm. That was ridiculously fast. Is that really true? I'm also going to want to only look at the ones on group filter hours is let, um, let's see. Yeah. What are the speeds? Aha, here we go. How fast do our, um, how fast do our, uh, animal, do our caribou travel? Uh, so this is how fast do our caribou travel? And we say, go. 
how fast okay, uh, title how fast do caribou travel kilometers um how on average how fast on average so another thing is like this is included sometimes they'll be sleeping sometimes they'll walk one way then walk walk the other way uh, so one thing I'm actually going to do with that is I'm going to filter for gap. I'm not going to include any of those multi-day gaps. Those don't feel like their uh, gap is less than, let's say, less than eight. Uh, oops, it's called hours. Uh, yeah, I think it is a reasonable start. All right, what we see is, is their speed on this scale is roughly log normal. Scales equals, I don't like, I don't like the, um, this format. Does this work? This doesn't. This. Oh. Oh yeah, that that looks better. Uh, point zero zero one. So like, the uh the average caribou travels a little under a tenth of a kilometer per hour. So it's not moving, not moving a lot. That's that's in any. This is for every single measurement. Uh, this is not the av This is not aggregated across caribou. But what I could do now is take our locations with gaps by animal ID and summarize the same way I earlier did our examples. Heck, I can throw in the study site. But also add in average speed, mean, KPH. Uh, and uh, NA, oh, they're all going to have at least one NA. Oh, and I forgot to do filter gap is less than or equal to eight. Yes. Now I'm just going to, I'm not going to do that. I'm do this one. Yes, I am. I need to be hours less than or equal to eight. Except that I only want this on hours less than or equal to eight. Here we go. All right. I only want this as a bracket, as like a subset of our kilometers per hour. Okay. So then I'd say like here are our uh, by animal. We've aggregated the animals. And now I can look at what are the fastest and the slowest caribou. All right. And, um, so what I'm going to do is, is look at average speed as a distribution. That's a good idea. The high ones are probably ones with relatively few observations, though I can't be sure. So I'm actually going to say um, num with speed is sum of hours less than eight. One thing here is I only want to look at the ones where I have this, this window of time. Uh, and um, I'm actually going to, I am going to simplify it. I am just going to say filter hours less than eight. Ignore all the ones where our gaps don't um, don't line up. And uh, why am I doing that? Because I want to say pl plot the number of points by the average speed, not a histogram, a geom point, and a scale x log ten. So one thing we see here is we definitely don't want to include any of these. These are ones we did we didn't have our like eight hour tracking data on. Uh, so maybe we want to say at least Definitely at least like 10 uh, filter num points. So like this is better, and this shows our cloud of, of our faster and our slower, like faster moving caribou. And then we have two that are really higher. The um, And I'm really curious about those two, uh, especially this one. It has a lot of points, but it seems to be, what is this incredibly fast caribou? Uh, a range descending average speed. Uh, and we have is oh, yep we have one with eighty nine and one with twenty six eighty four that's the one I'm worried about. This one we track for three years have a lot of data on it, and is it just a really fast caribou? Let's find out. Uh, or or is there or possibly is there one point that is say in Hawaii hit by accident that makes us think that it's a far greater distance? Well, we can find out with uh, location with so there's locations with gaps. Filter animal ID. Is this and for starters, I can arrange by by KPH and view and see did we have say a few extreme points? Well, we definitely have some extreme points, but 
there are there's more than one, and none of them are completely insane. Uh, so the kilometers are like in the 0.3 to yeah. How did this? But how did this data, where it looks like kph quickly goes down? No, yeah, 0.4. Ah, oh, what is the gap? How many hours are there? Oh, okay. A problem with this data. Check this out. Notice that our hours uh, look like they're wrong. Where we actually have a gap in time between two points uh, that is only a small fraction of a, of a second. Uh, and this definitely looks sketchy uh, because um, there's no way that these points were right next to each other and yet the points are very distant. Um, that sounds like, like, definitely sounds like a bug. So that is a data cleaning step that I'm actually going to say let's not even trust two points that are too close to each other in our analysis. Say hours must be at least, say, half an hour apart. Um, half an hour is a start. You probably could say at least an hour. Uh, but at the very least, it'll fix that one. And it does fix our graph. We now no longer have that point be an extreme outlier. Uh, we removed the cases where it was like two points that were right next to each other looking like it was zipping around at the speed of a car. Uh, all right. So the um, I'm going to add one more thing to here. Expand limits. I'm not going to do x equals zero because, oh no, you can't do x equals zero, it's on a log scale. But yeah, this is speed of caribou, and it looks like, yeah, there are some faster caribou than others. So then I can pick, say, a fast caribou, where we say, by animal, arrange, by an oh, and uh, I'm actually going to throw this filter up into our aggregation. That's a nice step, because now I can say, here, by animal, look through here, num points, greater than 10, uh, and I say, um, by animal filter uh, and sorry arrange descending kilometers per hour oh average speed and I can graph what does this incredibly what is this not incredibly fast but unusually fast caribou look like uh, I do that with one of the same kinds of graphs that we do other places uh, and I'm doing down there. Uh, and that graph looks like, here we go. By animal, locations with gaps, filter, QU, car 107. This is a fast caribou. Uh, here's something fun. I'm right now coloring by there by, ooh, yeah, it looks like there's some jumps here. Uh, I'm coloring by the timestamp. What if I colored by the speed? Uh, I should have done KPH. Yeah, so this actually tell, tells us something, which is that most of, of this caribou's um, time was spent not going very fast. And there were a few really kind of, um, this looks like one extreme, extreme value. Uh, at least I think that's kind of what this suggests. I'm not 100% sure. I can say ggplot kph filter animal id is qu car 107 Scale x log 10. Yeah, there were a few extreme values here. Hmm. Okay, that's worth uh, worth noting. But the median is still pretty high. Okay, so this is still is a fast caribou. All right. And uh, my other question they're going to have is: Do caribou travel at different speed during different seasons? This suggests that they do. Uh, like, uh, not 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 necessarily that all do, but notice like, oh relatively slow, relatively then here moving around more. They have individual clusters, there's sections where they stay clustered, sections where they move around. Uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do, uh, someone else just did color by day night time. Uh, I think that's going to have too many alternations. Remember there'll be literally hundreds of alternations uh, within, or at least like dozen, many dozens of alternations within each of these facets. So um, by the way, one thing I noticed, I really appreciate, some people have been have been providing code, which I, I really appreciate uh, you sharing with me, like, uh, 
Thanks, Mathie, but I, I just haven't had the chance to, to bring it into the analysis um, since I've been a bit short on time due to the technical difficulties. So, uh, oh yeah, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm really curious, if I look at this, if I group by the month of the year, does our does typical, the distribution of typical speeds change? I'm going to filter for only the reasonable sec subsection of hours, and then I'm going to say group by month is month of timestamp. That's month on a 1 to 12 basis. I'm going to summarize average speed is mean of, um, of KPH. Aha! There is we're over a year, and by the way, does month does month can month give labels? Yes. And uh, group equals one. So here we go. January through December, there is a trend where it looks like the animals are start slow and then get uh, and are fat, uh, slow in the uh, winter and the spring. They're faster in the late summer and the winter. It goes back down to December, then back down to January. Uh, so there, there does seem to be a seasonal trend in caribou speed. So that's really cool. Um, there were, uh, there's just a look by caribou speeds by season and caribou name. I don't think we have the names of caribou. I don't think we have um, species in here. If I look back at individuals, we see, uh, yeah, I don't think we have species here, but I do think we have, um, we do have the study, the, what is it called, the um, study site. I'm going to add that to this grouping. Study site. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to get that, I'm going to get the, also get the N, it's always good to look at, at the N as well, and say geome, here we go, group equals study site, and geome point size equals N. Oop, color, I forgot, color equals study site, and group equals study site. That's necessary for the lines. So it does look like there's a, it's a good thing that I looked at the study site um, for the, um, it's a good thing that I looked at study site because we actually do notice that some travel faster than others. I could have done a facet wrap and maybe, a, maybe drop the legend. So it does look like some of them were um, did see there were seasonal trends in caribou speed as well as differences in the um, in the study site. I'm gonna probably use, this is a pretty neat one. So I'm gonna say average speed kilometers per hour on the on the y-axis uh, and put the labs at the end. Okay, so I just want to I want to show that as one aggregation. There's a lot that we didn't do here. I didn't look at, um, I didn't like cluster. I didn't say, oh, it's likely that um, that caribou spend time in one place, then move a lot, then spend time in a place. I didn't make an animation, which we were, uh, which we were definitely talking about. Um, uh, and uh, and there was a package suggested. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, I was a little short. On, I already went a little bit over, but um, I was short on time because of the um, the technical challenges, and the. Uh, uh, what was the name of the package? Some people were suggesting a package for visualizing animal movement. Somebody want to remind me? It was something like Animove or something like that. It looked really cool. Anyone know what the package was? I'm looking through, I can't seem to... A move viz, it was called. Yeah, so there's a package of move viz that I didn't um, uh, try out, and that definitely would be a... Uh, ah, that's really cool, look at that. You make little swiggles watching it. Oh, that looks like so much fun. I don't have time for it. I, I appreciate everyone that's already stayed, uh, been in the... Um, in the uh, stay, stay in, staying along here. So this is definitely something worth trying. Ooh, and you can see different kinds of values. 
Uh, I bet I could do things like the speed over time. That's really, it's really fun. I've never worked with, um, as you can probably tell, these are very simple analyses. I haven't worked with things like animal position over time. And yes, yeah, so this is just a, a kind of some starting points. All right, so what we did is we visualized an, an individual, um, an individual, we visualized starting sites. Uh, we saw they were regional. We looked at a single animal that we randomly sampled and looked at their positions over um, looked at their positions over time. We saw that in some seasons, we actually see, can confirm here. Notice that um, the uh, notice that in the first six months of the year, this caribou stayed in the same place and they did a lot of migration in the second half of the year. And that's true in yeah, that's a little bit true in each of these. There's a lot more that we can do. Um, there's a lot more that we, that we could, uh, could have done in there. Uh, my last thought is I wonder if median speed if median speed would have been giving me a different story. That's weird. Uh, yeah, no, nah, maybe I'll stick to average. Maybe I'll stick to average, but no, I, li I like median. I'll tell you why I like median. Is it just remembered? Yes. Don't use uh, average speed because we saw earlier that speed is log, nor log normally distributed so that means are too um uh, too extreme. This is a weird this is a weird one. I, I, I kinda wanna just drop that one. Um, I but I don't know how many points were were there. Uh, but I am gonna say heck I'm just gonna say filter study site is not equal to heart. Let me just thank you for your patience while I finish this up. Heart. Oh were there eight sites? Hmm. Alright. Yeah, so this is a story. This is just kind of a story we can tell. Uh, all right. So this, yeah, and this looks at um, seasonal trends. It looks like they're different across different sites. It's hard to say whether it's they got they found a different kind of caribou, different regions, different something else. But it's definitely like a factor that seems to have uh, that seems to influence it. Uh, many of them have a dip in June. Don't uh, almost all of them, except for Graham. Don't know if that's real or not, or possibly or some kind of data issue. Uh, and um, yeah, we create a couple of visualizations, no animations, uh, and only the simplest of maps. But this was still really fun. Like looking at animal tracking data, like I said, is something that's pretty new to me. I think there's so much that can be done here. All right, uh, that concludes it. Thank you for bearing with me through the technical details. Uh, I hope you had fun. I certainly did. I'll see you next week.